In this Rhino Grasshopper tutorial, I want to show you how you can make this parametric pattern. As you can see, the thickness is changing as we go up in the y direction. And we can control that by the defining the minimum and the maximum. I change I can change that to 0 0.2 and this one to 2. You can see that the height is changing the thickness. So we're going to talk about this in this tutorial. But before we start this tutorial, just be sure to subscribe to our channel because we have weekly tutorials about Grasshopper. And if you're new to our channel, I will put up a video up here, which is about the beginners of Grasshopper, why you should learn it. And also, if you want to learn more about Grasshopper and advanced lessons, we have a course. You can also check out the course lessons up here. Okay, let's get started from scratch. What I want to do, let's just delete everything and start from scratch. Assume that this is the base image. What we want to do is to make this triangle pattern here and then make these cells, okay? So there are three cells in each of these triangles and then we can give that a thickness. So what we want to do is to use the base triangle pattern uh, or grid in grasshopper in the vector grid we're going to go and use this triangular grid and I'm going to put that on the canvas let me just put the bifocals plugin so you can see okay uh, the default is an XY plane you can see that this is located in an XY plane if you want to give that in an XZ plane we could just simply type XZ and give this to an XZ plane. You can see that's going to go in a height, maybe that's a facade or something. Uh, we can extract, right click and extract the origin, which is a point. And we can change the location of that if we want to. That is also available in display. If you go here and we have the gumballs here, okay? So remember you have to have that uh, activated. So the second part is the size. I'm going to give a number to the size. And let's just go back. This will change the size of the triangles. And you can see that this is basically uh, the triangle edges. Remember, that's the number for that. Okay, the next part is to define the number in the X. So we maybe want from 3 to 15 based on our project. And we can give that and increase the number of these patterns. If we want to make that like this, you can see uh, we have an odd number. So if it's an even number, you can see that this is the pattern. We can just double click this and go to even or odd. So I'm going to click on odd. So it's always a complete pattern and we, has, we have a symmetry on the corners. And now we can just increase these here. You can see again, if we give that uh, odd number, it's going to be a complete one. So you can just control that if you want to. Okay, let's go to the cells and the points. What we want to do is to make those uh, three cells which I've explained. Okay, we have to connect the center to the corners and we have this cell here. Let me show you with a yellow. That's the second cell and with a red. That's the third cell, right? First, because uh, we have to go into groups and these things, you can see that we have seven groups of seven, and that is because the number of the X and Y, and basically all of those grid tools give you rows and columns, okay? So what I usually do is to flatten the outputs of a grid, because if you want to use those cells uh, in columns, for example, maybe we just want to connect them as a loft, okay? It's going to loft those cells and it's going to give you uh, not a good result. So remember, always flatten them. So we have uh, here 49 cells in one group and we get rid of that. If you don't know about groups and you want to learn more, uh, if you want to go to our course, we have a complete section on this data management. But if you want to uh, watch our free tutorials, I will put it up here. It's about flatten and graph. You can also watch that. So now what we want to do is to go to the surface and use this area to find the centroid. And we have the centroid. We have to connect the centroid to the corners. Uh, we can go to the curve and use this explode tool. Okay, let me just show you here. Explode. And the explode tool will uh, basically make those triangles into uh, four vertices here. Okay, so we have the vertices. What I want to do is to go to sets. We have talked about this in 
uh, our basic tutorials, uh, how we can just pick up things with list items. So if you don't uh, know about these things, you have to watch the basic tutorials. So if we give that to the vertices and zoom in, this is the index zero. That means that if we have a zero vertex here, this will be a one and this will be a two. Okay, that's the number of the index of those points. So this is giving us uh, by default the zero out. Now we need the one and the twos. Okay, we can just simply zoom in and put on the pluses and we have the corners. Now, if I want to just show you how we can make those cells, uh, I'm going to go to the surface and use this uh, four point surface to show you the first point is going to be the centroid, right? And then we want to maybe connect zero and one to the centroid, right? If I connect this to the corner B and corner C, look what happens. It's going to give you lots of connection. And that is because these outputs, after we exploded, go into groups. That means that we have 49 cells. Each cell have four vertices. Grasshopper basically uses uh, another duplicate point to close a polyline. So if it's 0, 1, 2, it's going to be go back to the 3. And we don't need that, right? We just uh, dismiss that. So what we want to do is to also have a group of centroids, right click and graft. We have talked about this. And now you can see that we can just completely make that pattern. Again, we can connect that. But before we go further, I'm going to use something faster instead of making the surface. I'm going to go to the curve and use this polyline tool here and go like that. The first point, the second, with the shift key and the third. Okay, it's going to go like this and now we have to close that. So I'm going to say it's closed, right click and set it to true and that's a closed polyline. So you can use this one. Let me just connect the surface to this so you can see this. It's completely like that. So we have two options, you can use that four point surface or a polyline. I use the polyline because it's faster. So again, let's just make another one uh, from the centroid to number one with the shift key and number two. Remember it has to be closed. Again, control C, control V from the centroid to corner two and again to corner first. And now we have those cells. So you can see how easy it is. Let's just turn everything off. To produce those cells again i'm going to use a params curve tool and use the shift key to put all of those together into one group and because we don't need a groups again because each of those cells are uh, by themselves we can just right click and flatten and have those 147 uh, triangles smaller triangles now inside a one group okay you can see that they are all in one group so we have all of them in one group. So if you don't flatten, it's going to go uh, three polylines in each group. That means this is the first group, assume, and that's going to be the first, second, and third uh, polyline inside that. Okay, so each of those groups have three polylines inside, so we don't need that. I'm going to flatten this. Now what we want to do is to give them thickness based on the height. Remember, we, uh, based on the image, we want to change the thickness as the height increases. And we can do that by finding the centroid of this, like this. And another technique I want to show you uh, is that you can go to the curve and use this polygon center instead of the area. What it does is that it's faster. You can see it's faster because it's consuming less. Uh, uh, CPU and RAM to produce that. You can see that from display, canvas widget, and profiler. Okay, you can see that this is faster and it's going to give you uh, three outputs. Uh, you can see it's the center of vertices, center of edges, and center of area, which is the center of area what we want, right? Let's just connect this. I just turned it off and show you the center of area. It's a little bit faster. Okay. So we want to analyze the uh, height of this. We can simply go to the vector, which is the base for the point tools, and deconstruct this point into x, y, z. 
and I'm going to extract the Z component. That's the Z component for each of these points, right? Each of these points uh, have a Z component. That is what we need, okay? So that's the Z component. How can we uh, have different offset for these curves? I'm going to use the offset curve. That's the base one. You can find it in curve utility. And we're going to offset these curves. You can see that they are outside, so I'm going to go to the distance, right click, expression, and use minus six, that means inside. And you can see that if I give it a number, it's going to control the offset. Okay? Some of them have problems, so how can we fix this? This is outside, this is inside. Another technique you can use is to connect the curve to the plane. That means that it's going to find the best plane which the curve is inside. Sometimes it's going to fix that. As you can see, this time it's okay. And we have this offset of working here, okay? So now the problem here, let's just turn all the whole lines off. You can see that this is all one offset. We want to give that different offsets to make that uh, final pattern. How can we do that? It's going to be related to the Z component. We're going to use the remap tool. Uh, remember, you can always download the remap. I'm going to type this here because uh, some of the users didn't find that. But you can always type bit.ly backslash remap plus and download this. I'm going to also put that in our website so you can, you can go to our website and download this definition and also we have that remap plus for our users so now what we want to do is to simply do a remap uh, remember it's different than the remap numbers because uh, for the remap numbers you have to find the source the target it's just a simple tool so if you want to also know what is remap plus you can go to this address bitly backslash remap uh, example I think remap example and you can download the example okay let's just give this to the Z component it's going to scale all the Z's between the minimum and the maximum okay so maybe we want to say offset between 0 0.2 to maybe 2.5 that's the minimum and the maximum we want and we want to give that to the distance let's just delete this one and you can see that it's going to change based on height. We can also flip between the minimum and the maximum and give it uh, more thickness down here to go up. You can control that. Okay, now how can we just have the borders without these curves? Let's just turn this off. We want the inside of this. Uh, I'm going to show you a technique here. We can go to the intersection and shape use this region union. That means I'm going to unite, it's going to be here, all of these curves into one curve, and that is going to be the border, okay? Now we can also offset that. Let's just use an offset. And we can give this a controllable offset here. That's for the borders. Okay, you can see that. And now we can just make a surface from these two set of curves. I'm going to go to the surface and use this boundary surface. So I'm going to connect all of this with a shift key to the input and flatten that. That means I want to make a boundary surface from all of those curves. Uh, they are all in one plane. Uh, hopefully we have no problems and we'll have the surface. You can also extrude that if you want to. Maybe we want to extrude that in the y direction. Give that a little bit of thickness, maybe 1.5. And you can see that's going to give it a thickness. We can also extract the windows by connecting a param surface to the windows and making individual surfaces from the windows. And now you can just connect a display and a custom preview to just give it colors if you want to. Let's just turn everything off and give it a material, which I usually use a swatch. A color swatch is a fast way to change the colors and see the results. 
so maybe we want to give that a darker color and what okay so now you can see that we can control the minimum and the maximum and even change the minimum and the maximum and produce something like that and we can also change the numbers of the x and y so that's the tutorial we can bake that if we want to have that in rhino so let's just bake this in layer one and bake this into layer two and let's just close this and you can see that we have this in rhino that's completely okay and let's just go to the artistic mode so you can see the final results that's it and that's the results so that was the tutorial of uh, making this parametric pattern with uh, different thickness. Uh, you can check out our website to download this definition and see you next time. Mm -hmm.